The Johnson Wax Program, the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the Kingsman and Billy Mills and his orchestra. When you walk on wax, you save your floors. You have heard me say this before, but I'd like to repeat it, because it illustrates so clearly protection offered by genuine Johnson's Wax, a reason why this famous floor wax saves work and saves money throughout the year. When you apply a coat of Johnson's Wax to your floors, you're protecting them with a tough, invisible wax shield, a shield that guards the finish against scratches, scars, and dirt. Of course, that's only half the Johnson's Wax story, because floors that are regularly Johnson Waxed become more beautiful with every application. They have that rich, mellow glow so much desired by better housekeepers. Add to this the 100 extra uses for genuine Johnson's Wax for furniture, woodwork and leather goods, you understand why it's in so many homes everywhere. You can buy genuine Johnson's Wax in the familiar paste or liquid form and in the new cream wax, especially formulated for furniture and woodwork. Try some tomorrow. <laughs> has offered $250 to the election officials who bring out the voters in their precinct 100%. And here, presiding at the polling place, which also happens to be their home at 79 Wistful Vista, we find those two eager officials, Fibber McGee and Molly. Now remember, McGee. What, what? As long as we're the election officials, we've got to be absolutely nonpartisan. Okay, well, who are we going to be nonpartisan against? <laughs> Excuse me, please, Mr. McGee. I'd like to vote. Well, hello, Mr. DePapalapas. De <laughs> Your name, please, Nick? Nicholas Agasaki Prometheus G. DePopolis. <laughs> oh, what does the G stand for? Junior. <laughs> you got the same name as your old man? Oh, no. Papa's name is being Nicholas Agasaki Prometheus C. Depopolis. <laughs> oh. Well, what's the C for? Senior. <laughs> okay, let it go. Here's your ballot, Nick. You mark it in the other room and then fold it and put it in this little box right here, okay? Okie dokie, Fibber. But if I'd only known it was this much trouble, to elect a president of the United States, well, it's certainly worth it, isn't it, eh? Molly, imagine giving a dumbbell like him the vote. <laughs> well, the first time you voted, you were not so smart either, dearie. What I do? You took a ruler and a pair of scissors with you. What? You said as long as you were going to split your ticket, you wanted it to look neat. Oh, well, that was before. Uh, I'll get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello? Yes, 13th Precinct, polling place. Judge McGee speaking. No, no, no. I ain't allowed to give out any information. No, no. We don't know how the voting's going for any candidate. No, no. Oh, well, you just have to wait for the morning press, I guess. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Gallup. <laughs> Was that George Gallup? No, Charlie Gallup, the fellow I used to know in the circus. <laughs> oh. He used to play the cantaloupe in the parade. <laughs> no, you don't mean cantaloupe. You mean he played the calamity. Molly, Molly, a calamity is something bad. Well, I've never heard one play good. <laughs> what? One of them steam pianos. Those antelopes. Dad, rather they mean antelopes. Antelopes are kind of deer. I don't care how much they cost. I don't like them. And for your information, dearie, a cantaloupe is a mushmelon. Well, of course it's a mushmelon. I know that. Well, how could anyone play a mushmelon in a circus? Well, Charlie did. He bored holes in it and he played it like a sweet potato. <laughs> a little drippy, but it had rhythm. I can't forget one time we played in Mishawaka, Indiana, yeah? And Charlie couldn't find a cantaloupe for love nor money. Had to use it for simple. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. He played the parade all right, but his face was so puckered up he couldn't get near nobody for three weeks. But yeah, everybody thought he was going to kiss him. <laughs> no, sir. The following week, we were we were in 
McGee. Huh? Do you know what you can get me for Christmas? No, what? A big, beautifully colored, handsomely framed Rand McNally map of that dream world you live in. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get back to work, dearie. Okay, okay. Uh, how many more votes we need to get a 100% turnout? About 22. 22. Mm. Yes. Hey, that's, that's pretty good. Only 22 more, huh? Looks like we might win that 250 bucks, Molly. Gee, wouldn't that be great? Mm-hmm. I wonder how the election's coming on in other parts of the country. Well, search me. Should I turn on the radio? Well, I was going to turn it on myself, but then I got worried. What are you worried about? Well, that radio of ours is so old, I was afraid we would get returned from the Coolidge campaign. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's try it. I'll get the NBC Newsroom in New York. Quiet the polling place, please. We're going to get some election returns now. Here are the last-minute election returns. Roosevelt has taken an early lead in the presidential election. On the basis of incomplete returns, which have now come in from the South, the East, and a part of the Midwest, the NBC Election Totalizer Board here in New York now shows these figures. Roosevelt, 2,605,000. Wilkie, 2,037,000. Two million well, how's it look, Molly? How's it look? Are we going to turn in 100% vote in this precinct? I believe we are, Mickey. Oh, there's only just a few more. Hey, Mr. McGee, how old you got to be to vote? 21, Flanagan. Gee, that's great. I'll bring me son over right away. But Mr. Flanagan, I thought your son was only 16. He is, but he's heard so many campaign speeches, he's aged five years. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful what radio has done for politics, isn't it, dearie? Yeah, yeah. Used to be a speaker had to get up on the stump to talk. Now they just stand in front of a mic and get themselves out on a limb. <laughs> Well, hello, how do you do, Mrs. McGee and Mr. McGee? Does one do one's voting in here? Yes, one does, Mrs. <laughs> Uppington. Will one step up to the desk, please? Raise your right hand, Uppy. Oh, must I be sworn in? No, but that dress is so tight, I just wondered if you could do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let it go. Now, a few questions, Uppy, please. Your name? Uppington. Mrs. Abigail Uppington. Residence? Stucco. Your house is brick. I thought so too until I paid for it. Huh? Then I realized I got stucco. <laughs> oh, how I got stucco. Oh, my. That's a very old joke, Mrs. Uppington. <laughs> Listen, it's a very old house. <laughs> Uppy, you're hotter than a short order kitchen with that, you know it? You ought to save that material indefinitely. I intend to, Mr. McGee. You know, I expect to write someday. Oh, you'll love it too, Uppy. I remember when I learned to write. The teacher <laughs> says to me, Please, Mr. McGee, enough of this. My ballot, please. Just a moment, Mrs. Uppington. Your age, please. Yeah, I did. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, let's just say over 21. <laughs> oh, now, Uppy, not you. Yes, really, I am, Mr. McGee. Although I know I have the face of a young girl. <laughs> well, you better give it back to her. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting it all wrinkled. <laughs> well, really. Um, oh, my ballot, please, and where do I vote? Well, here you are, Uppy. Just go through that door there, Uppy. You'll find the place to... No, 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 Hey, Molly. Yes? After election, remind me to straighten out that clause. Did you see Mrs. Uppington get out there? Lovely footwork. Yeah, she's a little lightweight, sure. What on earth is that? Hey, hey! Look, somebody's making a speech out there. Hey, he can't do that. He's electioneering within 100 feet of a polling place. I'll put a stop to that. Come on, Molly. And that's 
That's why today, my friends, the Johnson Self-Polishing Glow Coat, the people's choice, should be elected to office. And not only to the office, but to the home, because it saves hours of housework and is so easy to use. Glow Coat. Glow Coat requires no rubbing and no buffing and gives new luster and beauty to all your kitchen linoleum. That's why I say... Vote for Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, regardless of party. And if you must have a party, be sure to use glow coat, because all good parties wind up in the kitchen. <sighs> I think I'm going to start carrying smelling salts with me, Molly. <laughs> what for? Uh, someday... Someday Will Clark's going to forget that tricky stuff. He's just going to simply say, Folks, now I'm going to talk about Johnson's glow coat. And he does that, I'll faint. Never mind that, McGee. If we want to win that prize, we'd better get some of these voters in here. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you call some of them up? Hey, that's a great idea, Mom. Give me the phone. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me the... Oh, is that you, Mert? Oh, no. How's every little thing, Mert? Tis, huh? Who? Your sister? Chomped off her what? Oh, heavenly days, McGee. What happened? Mert's sister was singing the old oaken bucket at the radio station. They, they chopped off eight bars off her chorus. Oh. What say, Mert? Oh, our line's out of order, huh? Okay, Mert. Thanks anyway. <coughs> Can you imagine that? Well, there's still time for the rest of the voters. Hey, hello, Johnny. Hello, daughter. Give me a ballot. Well, okay, old timer. Here you are. A few questions first, though. Molly, this is where we're going to find out how old this fellow is and what his name really is. Yes, yes. Name, please. A. Okay, okay, okay. Come on, come on. What's your name? Puddin' Tang. Ask me again, I'll tell you the same. <laughs> For goodness sake, don't be so coy, Mr. Old Timer. If you don't know the answers to the questions, you cannot vote, you know. That's right, as they say. Vote early and vote often. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But ain't the way I heard it. The way I heard it, one fellow says to the fella, Say, hey, he says, hey, but darn it, daughter. Why have I got to give you all that information? Make your vote legal, old-timer. How do you know what's legal, Johnny? Who, me? Yeah, you. Why? <laughs> I've been in politics since I was knee-high to a war dealer. Old-timer, committeeman, alderman, mayor. Why, when I was prosecuting attorney lawyers from all over the country used to say my pleas to the jury were the prettiest they ever heard. Pretty please, McGee. I was no bad those days. <laughs> yeah. Pretty please, McGee. Proclaimed by press and public, the peerless prosecutor pilfering pickpockets, political parasites, and perfidious persons performing petty peccadillos, putting prison pajamas on poker players, preying on poor punks with peculiar pasteboards, and purloining and property with prestidigitation, pleading with passion and faithless for poor people in pretty pickles. A peppy personality with a capital P. Oh, oh wait, here's more returns from NBC. <laughs> You think I didn't pop my peas. <laughs> Incomplete election returns are now available from 40 of the 48 states. And on the basis of these incomplete returns, President Roosevelt is leading Wendell Wilkie in both the popular and the indicated electoral vote. Oh, oh here comes Mr. Mim Wimple, the, the hand-pecked husband. Hi, a wimp. Just, just hold your ballot, slip it in the ballot box right there. You mean this great big box right here, Mr. McGee? That's the one, Wimple. Well, my big old wife already told me how to vote. Oh, Wimp, that's terrible. you got to stand up and let your wife know who's boss. Oh, she already knows, Mr. McGee. <laughs> she is. Okay, Wimple. Okay. Madam, you're next. Oh, I'm so thrilled, really. This is the first time I've ever voted. And I'm such an admirer of the man I voted for. I put some extra X's on the bottom of my mouth. <laughs> Kisses, you know. <laughs> well, looks like we're going to win that prize, Molly. Three more people come in to vote, and we can close the books. <laughs> oh, there. Good day, my dear. Good day to you, fake face. Give me a ballot, please. Okay, here you are, Boomer. 
And be careful how you mark it. Yeah, yeah. Certainly will, my dear. Can't betray the confidence of the people who bought my boat. Uh, let's see. What did I put those instructions? Instructions. Uh, and then here just a moment ago, uh, there's a deck of marked cards. I'm going to play a little Rummy tonight if he shows up. Letter from my dear old father from Vinegar, South Dakota. Says he takes his morning constitutional by walking 50 times around the jail. <laughs> round and round the vinegar job, pop goes the weasel. Oh, yeah, a couple of badly made counterfeit silver dollars. Caused me a great deal of embarrassment one time. I got a letter from the government telling me that I have to get the let out and the check for a short beer. Well, imagine that, no instructions. Well, you just have to mark your ballot without them, Mr. Boomer, right here in the other room, right over there. Thank you, my dear, thank you. There's no objection to my voting twice in each square. <laughs> Never could resist a chance for a double cross. <laughs> that guy's been in so many police blotters, he writes his name backward. <laughs> well, I'm glad he came in to vote anyway. Only two more, and we've won two hundred and fifty dollars. Only two more, Molly J. Uh, I'll bet we're the only precinct in the whole United States that voted one hundred percent. I lived in one once and voted four hundred and twenty-five percent. It was a wet neighborhood. We had a bunch of floaters. <laughs> Hello there, Mr. McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Come right in. Yes. Oh, hi, Gildersleeve. Glad to see you. What'd you come in here for? To vote. Fine. Here's the ballot. Here's a pencil. Just take it into the next room. No, wait a minute. Don't rush me. Oh, shucks. Gildy, you gotta vote. Who says I gotta vote? I'm an American citizen, McGee. Uh... Nobody can make me vote. Well, then, what'd you come in here for? To vote. <laughs> Good. Here's a ballot. Oh, no, you don't. You can't rush me like that. Oh, rush you into this. Oh, look, Gildy, as one American to another, I appeal to your patriotism. I, I appeal to your... Hey, don't you wave your flag at me either, McGee. My forefathers were in this country long before yours. Oh, is that so? Yes, it is. My mother had 12 sisters in the DAR. Yeah, well, I knew you had aunts, Gildersleeve, but I didn't know what they were in. Uh, you're a hard man, McGee. Now for that, I won't vote. Oh, no, oh, oh, no, no. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Mr. Gildersleeve, for not voting. Well. Why, your wife was the first one in this morning when we opened up. Yeah, yeah, she was. What? She was? Yes. You bet she was. Why, she's voting for a different candidate than I am. Huh? She can't do this to me. Give me a ballot. Oh, here, here. Give me a pencil. Here. Mm, let's see. President of the ex congressman, ex judge municipal, ex. Here, 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 here. Take it to the other room and mark it. It's all marked and in the box. I'll show Madam Gildersleeve. <laughs> Well, many happy returns, folks. <laughs> many happy returns of all the corny. Oh, heavenly days, McGee. Look. Huh? Look what time it is. We have to close the polls in exactly two minutes. Oh, oh we can, but there's still one border that ain't come in yet. Nevertheless, we have to close. We've got to keep it legal, you know. He can't do that to us. He's cheating us out of 250 bucks. Oh, come on, bud, whoever you are. Dad rat the dad ratted luck if he don't show up within two minutes. <laughs> oh say. Oh. Good evening to the both of you. And a very good evening to you, sir. All right, McGee. Here here you are, but we'll just skip the question, now. You, you only got a minute to make out your ballot. Me what? Your ballot. You don't stand there and I hurry up the board. I'm not there the for board. voting, Makushla. We'll check your registration afterwards, huh? I'm from the city hall. Come to take your ballot box. Oh, dear. Oh, it's heavy. The polls are closed. Good night to you. Oh. <laughs> well, 
I didn't want a new green automobile with red upholstery and the top goes up and down when you press the button anyway. <laughs> oh, McGee, darling, don't take it to heart, so. All right. I just can't help it, Molly. Oh, now, now, just because some stupid, short-sighted, irresponsible, un-American rapscallion forgot to put Please, Molly, don't talk like that. He, he ain't really a bad guy. What? You know who it was? Yes. Who? Him. <laughs> Me. Yeah. Oh. Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.